Hi guys, welcome to Studio Wild Life. In today's video, I'm going to show you something a little bit different. So, me and my dad made this ceiling mounted camera arm to save me some space while I'm filming, and it is fantastic. And I'm going to show you guys just how we did it in this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> So I'm sure a lot of you are in the same position as me, you're painting out of your living room, you're painting out of your bedroom, and you don't really have that much space. I've recently invested in some lights, and they take up a lot of room as well, so having my camera mounted on the floor, using a tripod, it's getting a little bit difficult to paint, I'm having to paint in funny positions, and it's starting to hurt my back and my arms. And I'm sure a lot of you are in that same position where you don't really have enough space to film if you're getting into YouTube, whether that's painting, whether it's drawing, whether it's something completely different, and you just want a different way to film something. Well, me and my dad put together a video showing you how we made this ceiling mounted camera arm. So I hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel because it means so much to us. Thank you very much, and I'll show you. Let's get started. So I just thought I'd give you guys a little tour of my studio slash bedroom. As we come in on the left, I've got some completed paintings, bubble wrap stored, not the best storage I know. I've got some other pictures over here, my bed, and then I've got my filming setup. Okay, so we've got two Favitech lights, I've got my Mac that I use for the pictures, and I've got my setup. This isn't the camera that I use for the setup, I'm actually filming on my camera, but as you can see, there isn't really much space to work in which is why I needed to build something a little bit different. And I decided that instead of having this tripod here, hey, to free up some of that floor space, I would create a ceiling mounted tripod, which is what this is here. All right, so I'll show you what we've made, if you have a look. So we've got it mounted on the ceiling with this wooden track that we made before. And that's just screwed into the timber in the attic. And then we've actually got a completely movable arm. So if I br bring it down, just using these bike skewers, we can lock it off and adjust it, and we can actually spin the disc around that's mounted in that track to give us 360 degrees of rotation, and we can slide it up and down this track. Okay, we've also got one set of arms here, and we use the three pieces of wood. They are 16 inches long, and we've got our second and third arms down on the bottom and we can adjust these just very simply by opening the clamps and locking them off and we've got a massive range of motion okay, and then to end it my dad built another one of these little mounts here which can be moved up and down like this and we finished it off with a ball and socket camera mount which gives us a full 360 degree rotation, so we can literally film from any angle. Right, enough of me talking, let's get on with it and I'll show you how we did it. The majority of the camera arm was made out of 1.2 meter by 56 centimeter birch ply, which was 18 millimeters thick and had a non-stick surface on one side to help with the clamping. We cut everything we needed out of that one piece using the table saw. Each arm was around two inches thick. We wanted three different sections to enable more movement. The first section was 16 inches long, made of three pieces. The next two were both 12 inches long. Next, we sanded the cut pieces. We marked out the curved edges of the wood. We cut the edges using a cross-cut chop saw to start the basic shape and make it easier to sand later down the line. We lost the markings on the black wood because of that non-stick surface, so we masking taped the edges to see our marks more clearly. We tape the pieces together for speed when sanding. These two pieces are for the middle section of the arm. We sanded the edges of each piece to round them up. The 
if we do a 20 mil gap so that's just giving two mil of clearance and then our piece for fastening to the ceiling is another 18 mil so we want this piece to be 38 mil how much what are we having so 68 and 68, that's 120, 36. What's this, what's this top one? That's just fastening it to the ceiling. Right, okay. If we do two pieces at 68, that'll give us that. And then that, the, that, that'll give us that and the other side, won't it? Yeah, the other side. Yeah. But if we do that at 50 mil, that means that it's it's got 50 mil. Hanging on it. Yeah, so we've on both got, sides. We've got yeah. a good platform there for, for, the, it to, for the disc on top. Yeah. Once pieces were cut, we needed to attach them together. We marked off each point and drilled some guide holes. We screwed the track in place and then moved on to making the moving disc that would attach to the arm. So the disc can be made at any size, can't it? So 150mm. We cut a 100mm square piece out of the birch ply, marked off the circle, then began to cut the edges to make the sanding easier. At this point, the disc was good, but it wasn't perfect. We marked off the centre point and screwed it loosely to a piece of wood to act as a pivot point. Rotating around the pivot point as we sanded allowed us to get a near perfect circle. We needed a smaller circle to allow for sliding between the tracks, so we repeated the process, using the sander and this time a lathe to achieve another near perfect circle. bolted the pieces together and used a few screws to hold them in place. So a 100mm square piece. Next we needed something to attach the arms to. We cut out another 100mm square piece to match the original circle. Bottom disc will sit in the track and the arms will be mounted to the square piece on top. Two and a half, isn't it, so. To mount the arms to the disc we built two attachment pieces about two inches deep. 50mm would be alright, you know, planter. We marked up the guide holes on the square piece, then cut and sanded it into a more pleasing shape. We then needed to drill a hole through the attachment pieces for our locking mechanism to slide into. We 
we use quick release skewers from a bike to act as the locking mechanism. We screwed everything together, then threaded the skewer through to create the first set of arms. We then drilled holes in the other arms and attached the skewers with washers to make sure the mechanism would be tight enough to hold the camera. We now have foldable arms and 360 degree rotation. Next we needed to finish off the ceiling track. We cut three pieces to mount to the top of the track and attached them with screws. Unfortunately we didn't get to finish the final part, my dad used a router to round off the edges of the arms just to make them look a little bit more finished and then spray painted them black and built a final small attachment piece for the final arm that the camera would fit to. Then we added that ball and socket camera mount to the end of the arm to give a full range of motion. So I thought I'd show you with the camera mounted so you can see the camera. This is actually my dad's camera, not the camera I actually film with. Um, but you can see that if we just move it along the track and spin it, we can actually get almost any range or any angle that we can film on. So if I want to film the tiger that I'm doing over here, from here I can. If I wanted to film it from this angle, I can just move it over. And if I wanted to film as a top down, I could just extend my arms Right, and I can lower this, which would then give me that top down view. Right, and let's say I'm not painting at my desk and I want to paint at an easel over here, I can just spin it round and again pretty much film at any angle. We can just knock this back. Right, and there we have it filming at this angle and we can also move it over here and film from another angle and it frees up so much space in the room now I don't have that tripod there I don't need to maneuver myself around the tripod it's just the big massive lights I've got to worry about our Christmas project I think is to try and get one or both of these lights also mounted to the track or to a different track so that they are off the floor as well and give me even more space and freedom to paint and move around that's going to be our Christmas project. There we go. Thank you so much for watching, it really means a lot. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And for more wildlife art tips, please head on over to studiowildlife.com. So please go check that out if you want some more details. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.